It's time for our Steam Linux update of the week. Uh, dude, Jordan, you know, seriously, now that Steam is out, I don't think we need to make such a fuss about Linux Steam news, man. But, but weak, eek, eek. No, eek. no, bad Jordan. You're breaking my heart, then. Coming up on this Linux Gamecast Weekly, does Steam install wine? We discuss that. Also, some tips and tricks that you can use for your hacked Steam client. Did I mention Steam? And on that topic, some of the humble indie bundle goodness that you can add to your unofficial version. And we do a Kickstarter roundup. All that and more. Let's go. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers Linux gaming news, reviews, and more importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And joining me, Vince Stone, as always... My nimble co-host, Mr. Svang. How's it going, man? Hello. I'm fine. How are you? You're fine. How, how fine are you? I am... Do the ladies fine. say how fine you are all the time? No, they don't. They don't at all. They really should. Jordan's an attractive young man. Then I told you, like, three times already. I'm not going to sleep with you unless I get very, very... Very, very drunk. We'll leave that at that. So what have you been up to, man? Um, uh, it's been fun? a fairly dull week. Um, the Well, we might as well come out and say it. Steam bid is up. Yay! We, I mean, that uh, is kind of my week as I had all these things put together that it was like, I'm going to do this, 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 and that. Yeah. And what? Wednesday, Wednesday, Steam bid is out. Here's the dev. Start playing around with it. Sweet. I think it was about lunchtime at work that I got the news, so I immediately grabbed the dev and started working on it. It wasn't too hard to move it over to Fedora. There was even um, some Fedora readers, but we're going to talk about that a bit later. Um, me, myself, I bought a very interesting contraption. A contraption, you say? Well, I do say... It is very interesting for a contraption. All right, what is it? Just quit leaving us in suspense, then. Hmm. Terrified, petrified, and stupefied won't be this contraption. It's a fan with a heater built into it. Have you ever seen these? A fan with a heater built into it. Hmm. So it blows hot air. Much like me, it blows plenty of... Uh, I was going to say, so you got yourself a backup head. Yeah. Go and say odd people brocks on us. Well, you know, if I ever get sick, I, I can just put it up here and cut it on, and th that'll work out. So is it, is it starting to get chilly in Georgia? You know, it is a bit chilly, but this year I've decided to, during the summertime, which is ridiculously hot, and I'm not, you know, the humidity doesn't bother me, but 100% humidity with 90 degrees... On a That's cool, pretty unpleasant. On a cool day, normally about 112, my power bill was about $300, $380. Wow. That's Which a lot is of money. miserable. So I bought some wall units, especially here in the studio, to put in the doors, and they're 5,000 BTU units, and my power bill went from that to $50. Excellent. Because I was only cooling, you know, like the rest of the sane world. Um, it's something you'll definitely see in the UK. Um, just zone heating and cooling instead of cutting on the entire system to cool, you know, the other four rooms that you're not using. So I'm trying mm -hmm. that with this little heater. And, yeah, it's, it's kind of working. It wheezes as much heat out as an Italian sports car. All right. So... That's about it for what's going on, unless you got some... Oh, what's that shirt you have on, man? Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I have my three-turret moon shirt. 
three on two. in celebration for the launch of the Steam Linux beta. Oh, I was so excited. Um, isn't it a bit surreal loading a Steam client on Linux? Not really. Um, the one... I actually noticed one thing that I'm a bit disappointed with is that the wine, if you, if you run Steam under wine, you get the little icon at, on your, on your application tray mm -hmm. that lets you like right click on it and quit or go to like whatever screen you want on there. That's not there with the Steam Linux beta. Oh uh, yeah, it is. Is it? I don't see it. It's built in, uh, well, it popped right up with XFCE4. Uh, maybe GNOME 3, not so much. Yeah, it's right there on my top panel. I always keep my running applications up top and with just my launcher at the bottom. But yeah, it popped up there with my little notification center. Huh. I didn't get that in GNOME 3. Mm. Well, maybe that's a GTK 3 issue. That's what you get for using Watch such it. a bloated system. Oh, hush you. you I think I... about GNOME versus XFCE. No, I'll be the first one to say I think XFCE is getting a bit fat compared to what it used to be. Hmm. I would use a window manager it's, for most things, but yeah, XFCE is as big as I maybe LXDE, maybe, but outside I like, of LXD doesn't even get maintained anymore. I think it's like one guy on and off. That's like a lot of our development. But let's go ahead and jump in to our We got we we got some news from a from a listener we did. Yeah, um, somebody who, from uh, from Andrew Pyle. Andrew Pyle, he wrote um Iculus. What did he say, man? He said, um, let me pull that up. He's asking what, uh, what Oculus has been up to programming lot wise, and now that Linux gaming is becoming more relevant. And Oculus, aka Ryan C. Gordon, replies, lots of work for the appending Steam Linux release. New games, old games, and tools to support them. Fun times. Now, you had a question before the show. Who exactly is Oculus? Yes. I'd assume he would had some sort of relationship with Silent Bob, just given his Twitter avatar, but I know that's certainly not the case. Well, most people might, may or may, he's always been behind the scenes. He was responsible for importing, you know, he worked with Loki originally way back when in my Linux gaming days. Your when favorite I, company. Yeah. And well, that's when I thought the Linux gaming revolution was going to happen. I was just a decade early. But in later times, he's also been resp responsible for porting several of the Humble Indie Bundle games, like Braid, and some you know, Serious M2, I believe, he worked with. But it's good to see that he is doing that. And he wrote back, you know, as you said, lots of work. And this is where yeah. I... Yeah, this is where I say it's surreal, because it's... It, it, it's good to see man. that Valve is leveraging the Humble Guy's experience with porting games, though. I mean, and that's something we should also mention that the Humble Guys have hired a full-time Linux developer. Now we don't have that oh. as a link, but it's happened. There's also we we didn't add this on the show notes, but I feel it's worth mentioning. There's a new Humble Bundle out too for Android. There is an it's an Android bundle. And I have to downplay it a bit because I already own most of the games from previous yeah. games. Yeah. That, 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 that's been one of our recurring complaints about the Humble guys is that we keep getting the same licenses over and over and over again. Can use some new blood. And we have some new blood in the simple fact that we got some new games coming out for the... Linux Steam Beta, and the first one is Red Orchestra. It has arrived. Red Orchestra has indeed arrived, and what is it? It is, um, it's a shooter, I guess. Well, it is a shooter, and we just went a bit out of order, didn't we? We did. We were supposed to discuss the whole Steam launch but we kind of did that as well. We but, did, well, and know, that's what I'm thinking. So just for fairness, let's go back to what we should have went to is um, the beta has arrived. And when I say, well, kind of, did you get a golden ticket, man? I did not get a golden ticket, unfortunately. It looks like they went the full-on Ubuntu route. 
So anyone who was reporting on on Ubuntu OS, I don't know. Well, that's one thing that kind of set me sideways, because there was an option, how many years have you used Linux? I was like, hmm, 15, is that far as it goes? Come on, I can give you another year on top of that, suckers. Um, then I go and I'm looking in the um, forums, you know, the um, Steam Linux beta forums, and the questions people are asking, apparently that wasn't one of the deciding switches because of, like, how do I double clicked on this thing and thing doesn't open? How do I understand what's going on with this moon magic? Moon magic. Well, I guess you got, they got to target the biggest demographic they possibly can. And it seems guess... they kind of went low end with focusing on Intel integrated graphics. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, the games don't run, seem to like to run as well under Optimus. They mm. they run pretty well just when I run them on the native IG on the Intel IGP. But when I try and opt to run them, it tends to get um, it tends to get a bit fuzzy. But continuing on with this, um, Frank from Steam he wrote. Let's zoom in on this a bit so you guys can read it at home. The first wave of welcome emails has been sent out. If you filled out the survey but haven't received an email, don't despair. We will be expanding the beta in the future with more participants. So hang on for that. But, you know, you might not need to hang on, man. Well, if if you... Well, the Debian file is out for everyone to grab and anyone can really unarchive it and just extract the binaries to their proper location, figure out all the depths, install it, and run it, and there's a, there's already a workaround for you non-beta people to get into uh, Steam Linux beta. And we're definitely going to get into that in just a moment, but I think one of the exciting things is how many games have arrived, and that's what we missed started on, and one of those games is... Red Orchestra. 4145. Have you ever played this? It looks a bit like Castle Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Uh, no, I've not actually played this. This is the first I've actually heard of this game. Let's take a look at the, um... The it's... Metacritic review is pretty good. 81 out of 100. It, yeah, it looks terribly primitive, so I'm guessing it's, uh, oh yeah, from 2006. Yeah, the last updates are from 2007. Hmm. So, nah, still, it's more stuff you can play on your Linux client, so... That's definitely right, and we're seeing a lot more of that, and continuing on with what else has been coming out with Red Orchestra, we also have... Killing Floor. Killing Floor. Killing Floor runs great on basically everything I've tested it on, and Killing Floor is a pretty fun game at that, too. So, it's good to see Killing Floor on there. And consider, and if you already own it, then you can just start playing it on Steam Linux without any real issue. Here it is right here. It looks pretty neat. And when did that come out? In 2009? Yeah, it's, it's fairly old, but it's, it's, it's one of those games that hasn't really... I, I'd say I'd group it in with sort of like the Counter-Strikes, where even though the technology's old and the game looks a bit old... It's still fun to play. Like, the gameplay is still valid and fun. It still looks pretty good. And, yeah, it said, um, let's see here, with a little bit of um, zooming and beginning. Killing Zombie. Floor is a co-op survival horror FPS. So it's kind of like Left 4 Bed. Left 4 Bed. Ooh, there we go. Um, left... it's, like le it's like Left 4 Dead mixed with, like, tower defense, in a way. Basically, you try and survive as long as you can. Actually, you know what I'd liken it to more? Have you ever played Alien Swarm? No, I can't say I've ever played Alien Swarm. It's like it's like a first person Alien Swarm where like you have to play it smart. Like when you open doors, you have to close them and weld them behind you so that the aliens can't get or in this case the zombies can't get through. And while Alien Swarm is top down, this one is uh, first person. So you're saying you just can't go mental and just start capping. Yeah, you got you you have to play it a bit smart if you want to survive. Okay, well, that is Killing Floor, and it's available in the Steam Store, and it works with our Linux clients. Now, this third and one was... A little serious. 
It's a little serious, uh, and that Sirius Sam 3 BFE is, was made available, I believe, what, two days ago? Two-ish days ago, yeah. Yeah, two-ish days ago, and if you're listening to this, the sale's probably already over, but this weekend yeah. you could have picked it up for nine ninety nine wet, stinky caches. I don't know why you'd subject yourself to that, though. I know this is coming, but I do want to say, um, I enjoy it. I'm, I'm glad Crow Team's been working with that. I've owned the original Serious Sam, played Serious Sam 2, both which have always worked under Linux. Mm -hmm. And when this rolled out, I was excited to see it. I like the graphics, uh, the engine update. It, it looks all right. Feels a bit different. I'll, I'll give you that. But my problem with it is that it's five hours of endless desert level, and that's it. So it's all and desert. It's all desert. It's Serious Sam 1, second encou first encounter, second encounter style gameplay, which is nice. They polished it really well. It's just, you know, the same shit over and over again. Serious Sam 2 had, like, vehicles and had, like, different types of combat stages. This one, it's it's a rehash of second encounter, first encounter. Hmm. I like I, I I have some hit I have some history with this game. Like this was the game that me and my friends used to play and play at high school, and we we fucking love Serious Sam first encounter, second encounter. We love Serious Sam two, and then this rolls around and kind of shits in our ter in our Cheerios. Did you have any problems um playing or installing it? Well, I haven't installed it on my uh, Linux systems just because of my extreme distaste for this game. Ah, oh, you damn heretic. I did I, install I it. I paid full price for this game when it came out, and I was sorely disappointed. Mm. I could understand paying, you know, 40 quid for that. I did get in on the 999, and if everything works out, I might have some keys. Well, I should say we should have. Me and Jordan should have some keys to give away next week. For mm -hmm. this game, we'll come up with some crazy zany contest, which will probably involve posting some random arbitrary things in our forums. But that will be that the only issue I ran into with Sirius M3, and honestly, the only issue I've ran into in Steam as a whole so far is with the dual monitors, it wants I, I, to... Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say I haven't tested it with the dual monitors. I've just been playing it on my laptop. Mm. With the dual monitors, um, if I go too far to the right, it freezes. It, Steam thinks my cursor has went over to my monitor, which is on my left, because I'm crazy and I like to move to the right to move to the monitor over here. And Question, do you play them in full screen mode or full screen windowed? You know, I've tested this out in both. Hmm. Same effect. The only way to get rid of it is to disable the monitor, which requires start restarting X. And what I've done is just create a new X server profile so I can just start a new X server and play it hmm. without those the, issues. The one nice thing about Optimus and the way it's implemented on Linux, though, is you can, you can run two separate X servers simultaneously. So that might be that might actually be a solution for um, for anyone who's running dual monitors with Optimus, say if they have a laptop plugged in. Hmm. Good deal. I'm sorry you didn't like the game. Maybe we'll play some co-op and scream at Maybe. each other. I don't know. Maybe. But moving on. Moving on. What can you so, do? Yes. So we've talked about games you can go out and buy if you have access to the Steam beta, but what can you already play? Well, there's a couple of things here, isn't there? Yes, we got a nice long list of compatibility issues. We have a nice list of things you can do if you're not running Ubuntu to set up your Steamy goodness. Now here is something, I mean, if you're checking out our post on Linux Gamecast, um, we have some Ubuntu, some Arch and some Fedora, but if you scream over here to our unofficial Steam install Arch Fedora and Ubuntu, we've also added Slackware. Ooh, Slackware. Yes, 
User friendly is a coiled rattlesnake, I always like Indeed. to say. Indeed. But that is there. But back to that post. You can install some humble indie bundle games. You can. No. Actually, if you if you already have your humble indie keys redeemed on Steam, you log in and all your games are there. It's pretty nice. But you have to add them if you're a purist like me who doesn't own a Windows gaming box. Ah. And that said, let's take a look at Steam on Linux. And we'll go ahead and start that up. What you're going to need to do is check out our show notes for the link to that post. It'll show you how to redeem all your past keys if you don't already have them and add mm -hmm. them in and say, I've just started up Steam. I would go to games, activate a product here. And if you're watching the video podcast, it's probably a good idea to follow along. If you're not, use your imagination. Click the next button. Click I agree. Click. There's your product code right there. Enter the On the humble Steam pages, key. Right. you can generate them and then pop them in there, and you should be good to go. Exactly. And the Well, you could be good to go, depending on what exactly you want to play. That's very true. Not everything works. Now, you'll notice that you do have your Linux games. We have all games. I have 26 games installed, and a lot of those are from the Humble Bundles. But they don't work just yet, but if you filter I, that... I, I was surprised to not see Torchlight on the Linux game list. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I, we have currently Amnesia, Braid, Cave Story, Frozen Synapse, Limbo, <gasps> Osmos, Psychonauts, Rokard, um, Serious Sam, Space Pirates and Zombies, Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery, and Truck Mania Nations Forever, which we will get back to later. Your friends list work. Um, big Picture Mode works. I like big, it. I, I, I was surprised Big Picture Mode worked. Yeah, they said big that wasn't going to launch. Um, here's the build date, um, November 9th. Everything else is working. You can see my system information, you know, everything, you know, four, three gigahertz processors and all that fun stuff, five gigs RAM, mm -hmm. five a GTX 560 Ti and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Did, did you did you have any weird happenings trying to get uh, the beta installed? No, it was pretty straightforward. I, I guess you're on Ubuntu. I had, I had a bit of an adventure with that. Uh, the client won't actually, for me anyways, on F17, latest kernel. And latest that would be everything. Fedora 17. Fedora 17, yes, to clarify. Um, I have to, I actually had to run Steam as root first, because it apparently needed to do something that it couldn't accomplish under a non-privileged user. Hmm. Well, and af af after you are that, running a 64-bit system, I'm guessing it probably had to install an arse load of love. Oh, no, dear. the the wonderful RPM that Spot gave out. Uh, Spot is a fellow at Red Hat who made the repo available so that you can just yum install your Steam client. Uh, he was nice enough to figure out what uh, was needed for all the development packages and whatnot to get uh, Steam running. So I used his notes as a base and installed things manually, and then. When things got a bit weird after I had started modifying like the built-in shell scripts, I decided to wipe everything and just install straight from the repo. Hmm. But you do have it up and running, right? I do have it up and running. Uh, Killing Floor works well. Aquario works well. And um, I'm running into the no executable things. They, got, they really have to fix that when you click on something for, to download it. It doesn't download it, but says it does. That yeah, was kind of weird. Uh, I don't like that. Then you check it for the properties, and it says no files installed. No and, files. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what that is, and I I, I wonder, do they actually have? Uh, can you actually file bugs if you're not a member of the beta? Not just yet, but that's something I think we need to address. A lot of people are worried that accessing the hacked, and I don't call this the hack. This is the exact same method used on the Mac to access. Their closed beta. Steam mm -hmm. put this in a non password protected directory for download for the entire interwebs, and they've never bothered to change it. So they're being very clever, I think. They're letting mm -hmm. us do 
all the cross plat Linux cross platform cross distribution testing on our own mm. dime. That's what we do, though. That's true. Unfortunately, it would it would be nice to have just an open avenue of like a bug tracker, just so we can anyone can start submitting bugs to Steam. I think that uh, might be a bit overwhelming at this point, but I think it's genuinely going to roll out, and I really don't think there's any issue installing, you know, or bypassing the check, which is a um, the equivalent of "please don't use this." Click OK. Mm-hmm. I, I I was pleasantly surprised with the games that did work, though they worked fairly well. I've had a brilliant experience with everything I've used so far, and it's good one, stuff. Go ahead. One thing I would like to add, though, is because I'm almost positive there would be a lot of Optimus users uh, who are using Steam for Linux. Add a freaking option so you can change the prefix of the executables on your games. Like, I know you can set up custom flags and whatnot. That's been around on the Windows version forever. But if I want specific games to run under Optimus and specific games to not, I should have that option to say, do you have like a prefix you want to attach to this one game or application? Hmm. But not only does that make sense since we're dealing with Valve, that'll probably get added. That probably will get added. That's just something I noticed right off the bat. But speaking I, I of drivers, I've, man, speaking of drivers. Oh, yes, drivers. Nvidia. We got some double speed drivers. Double speed, and this is from the register.co.uk NVIDIA Herald Steam for Linux debut with double speed drivers. And they're also the ones responsible, NVIDIA that is, for leaking the release date of the actual right. Steam client. But, Very rare that I'll get to say this, but hooray for NVIDIA. Yeah, good on NVIDIA for that. And that same day, that came out early that morning. Later that day, we got the Steam client in beta released in about four, four and a half milliseconds after that, everyone figured out how to bypass the security check. Mm -hmm. And there we are. But what, what they do say is, let's see, according to the chip maker, the drivers double the performance and dramatically reduce game loading times of Linux games. At least if a test comparing the new code with version 304.51 while running Valve's Left 4 Dead 2 beta is anything to go by. Now, that's one of the things, even the golden ticket holders, they have Team Fortress 2, but they don't have Left 4 Dead. No, that's a damn shame. I, I was actually kind of hoping for Left 4 Dead. Hmm. I was thinking it was going to be Portal, but, yeah. Guess they need yeah. to sort that out. But for once, I guess we need to say there's something that Phronix, a.k.a. he who shall not be named, does that is of value. Can I at least give them that much credit? The hardware benchmarks are pretty top-notch. Okay, we'll do that. And of course, Michael, the only one at Phronix, he's posted some benchmarks of these new drivers. And we'll look at Nexus here. Which is, is oh, HDR, yes, sound on. The new drivers are 40, and yeah, you get about an extra 30 frames a second. That's pretty good. That's, That's a sizable improvement. Yeah, and we're looking at a GTX 680 with Open Arena, 285, 320, roughly the same amount, not quite as much. And U Engine, eh, maybe once, and maybe a 7% increase. Yeah. Nothing major, but then again, um, there there was a lot of OpenGL optimization done by Valve and by game companies as well that may they 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 may have tightened up the code on their products, so that may change when used in conjunction with the new NVIDIA double speed drivers, as it were. And that's something I need to um, do myself is install the latest drivers because you won't understand. Down how much of a headache it is to install the drivers, just the run file, without using Ubuntu's driver update system. It's a pain in the oh, ass. Oh, I freaking hate it. The, 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 the blob drivers that NVIDIA ships do some weird things if you want to remove them. They throw random files all over the place that really don't need to be there. 
But we'll get that sorted. But moving on with our Steam moving on. Linux fun stuff. Linux Steam Beta installing Trackmania with wine? Question mark? Question mark? No, here's the thing. Even in the video, let's just hit play on this right quick. You can see that Trackmania Nations Forever is up and running. But here's the catch. You see it launch. Well, it sort of launched. They're just doing a video test. But the game seriously runs. Let's see. Let's fast forward in the video. There it is. Right there. Running before your eyes. And seriously, I'm a fan of Trackmania. I even own the PC DVD, a limited edition set that comes oh. with the 3D Googles. The th but they do nothing. And they do nothing for me, but we've already discussed that. Yes, Mr. Blindy. And let's see where we're at here. So what happens is, first I'm thinking, all right, NATO finally ported this critter to Linux, but they didn't, did they, Jordan? No, they didn't. What did they do, man? What did they do? They used our favorite alcoholic beverage distilled from grapes. Mad Dog 2020? Yes. Yes. No, what they did do is use wine, and that's kind of a sticky wine. situation. Um, I installed it. It gives you no flags. Nothing like that. I mean, you can watch the video at linuxgamecast.com, but you download it. You click install, you, unless you have a terminal window watching everything go on, no notification whatsoever that, mm. hey, I found wine and I'm using this to install wine. Nothing. Is that a bit worrisome? Should we be worried about that, man? I think there should be a lot, especially given like the varied setups of Linux systems that this thing's probably going to be running on. It would be wise to have some decent output that people can use to debug their damn issues. Not even output. I want to know if a game is going to be native or not. Now, I understand we're in pre-beta stages of mm -hmm. Steam, but I want a notification somewhere that says if this thing's going to... Now, I should say, if you don't have Wine installed, it will still install. It just won't run. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think this was so much a bug. This is something built into Steam, because you don't accidentally write something to look for wine. Am I correct in saying that? No, if you're like, well, you could accidentally do that, but in this case, no. No, I think we're in agreement on that situation. It's there. That's something that it just seems like it would be a nightmare for some developers to try to use wine and all that and support and all that. But it's there. Just wish that they would put a big red box up and say, hey, this game used wine, but that's probably going to come with the official version, wouldn't you agree? Probably. There, there's also the option of using WineLib, though I haven't really been doing much reading into that. Mm. But that lets you sort of self-contain the wine elements of your program and make it still run. Jordan. Jordan. You, I know, I know. You're not a fan of wine. I get it. I get it. Jordan. Yes. Jordan. Yes, then. Wire vessel. War Vessel. Well, Thar Vessel, according to blog.humblebundle.com. Um, let's pull that up. Humble Bundle uh, Vessel and Porting. Go ahead. Yes. So, they said eons ago that Vessel would be coming to Linux and Mac in 24 to 72 hours. It has not been 24 to 72 hours. Um, they've had some difficulties uh, porting it. Uh, Flibbit Jibibo, the guy they put in charge of hosting Vessel, made an interesting blog post about what exactly had been going on. You, you, you can see he's made some pretty good progress, given that first screenshot to the last one in the article. That basically he has to deal with... Um, oh, I can't even remember. I have no brain. Yeah, um, one of the biggest issues was the GL render making rainbow colors. GL render, oh. that's what it was, yes. Um, but yeah, this guy, you've said that this is probably going to take much longer than all the other parts. 
That's you going, mentioned that last week. Yeah, that's going to be the tricky business, and especially being one person on one project. I mean, unless he he might be able to get it sorted. Here's one thing to note that um, I think it's okay to say this: that Vessel is in private beta testing right now on Linux. Yeah. So they 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 they've, they've revealed that much. Um, Humble though is offering full refunds. But really, am I, I, I sent most of the money to charity. So I'm going to be like, no, no, you sick dying kids, because some developer didn't do his job. You're going to spend your dying days in agony and boredom. I'm not going to do that. I'm just surprised it took this long for all the screeching about, you know, hey, let's get the game if we're paying for it to finally come mm. to fruition. Hmm? Yeah, it, it took a bit longer than expected. I think they really should have had at least a beta that they could have given out before they said that they were offering it as a humble game. But there's work being done on it. On it, It's coming. The it, Flibbage Jibibo isn't just wasting his time, I hope. That's true, and you can check that out at blog.humblebundle.com. And coming hey, up... They, they, well, I was just to add one last thing under there. They did hire more guys to do Linux porting, so who knows? Yeah, we gave that a mention a bit earlier, and that's good on you guys at Humble. You know, keep up the um, good fight. You know, fight fight the one mm-hmm. man or whoever a person's of raw raw fight the power. Yes. Okay. So sorry for up. interrupting you, Ven. Continue. Coming up next is our feedback and yeah you're right man we definitely need to check out that feedback our first bit is from the force team the force team and they're forcing us to tell them tell you guys about this what is force it's by beta dwarf what's the um bit about the game what's it do shiny force is uh diablo like well, that's apparent. It says Diablo meets Left 4 Dead, um, indie yes. style, exclamation point, PC, Mac, and Linux, Xbox 360, PS3 will also be available, DRM3. Now, I think that's a clever way to go about making the game just DRM free in general. Indeed. Trying to attack all platforms. They're using Unity too, so that should be fairly easy to do. And hopefully, when Unity, um, 4 ships, we'll get a lot of new games. Lots and lots and lots. But, um, this is a team player based game that, with a heavy emphasis of cooperation, I actually think we mentioned this game before a while ago. Yeah, we've given them a mention, but they're rounding down on their days, 19 days to go, 18 Mm -hmm. grand pledged out of 40, which. Almost at the halfway mark. A lot of. Games that seems like a reasonable amount to make a small game, indeed. And that's something you got to keep in mind about Kickstarter games. Your funding comes, you know, in the first few days and that last push. Indeed, everything. It in didn't the look like that parallel thing was going to make it, but in the last two days they got two hundred thousand dollars. Right, and they ended up with that. But, you know, they did send us a note, and I wanted to scream in their direction. As Jordan did point out, um, they are using Unity, so hopefully that'll make it, um, you know, easy-peasy to get it over to Linux, which I'm still a bit skittish about things that aren't currently running on Linux. Does that make any sense, Jordan? It does, but, I mean... I'm 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 reading through the email right now. I see I see the I see the point you've specifically denoted that you are upset about this point. It's a it's a demo though. I mean, maybe a bit further on the dev cycle when uh, when they have a bit more development done, maybe they'll hopefully they'll uh, they'll release a, a Linux demo or at least a Linux beta that people can play around with. I think that's cool. And also, when our mailbag, um, Ken sent us a bit of a note, didn't he? Yes, Ken Bowen has something pulpy to tell us. Um, he has some pulpy news. What's he got to say, man? He has got a Kickstarter for a game called Pulp. And 
It is, according to them, a science fantasy airship combat game with fully 3D single player campaign with customizations from cannons to ray guns. Now, I'm going to and, give Ken a bit of advice right now. We're watching the video. I'm 47 seconds in, and I'm not seeing any gameplay yet. That's true. Now, or not even some concept art. That's a marketing thing, and I know um, our kind, we don't make the best um Marketing types. Or salesmen in general. But go ahead. I didn't mean to interject. Oh, um... They seem uh, one of the one of their big selling points is that they're doing equal genders, colors, and LGBT friendly. So good on them for that. Definitely good on them for that. I mean, the game looks all right. It looks I mean, it's not good. terribly graphically impressive, but I like the concept. And there's nothing wrong with airships. I mean, airships, man, they're just cool. Ever <clears> since <throat> like what Final Fantasy IV, everyone's wanted to go on an airship. Indeed, and if you're a follower of any type of anime long before Final Fantasy. Long before Final Fantasy. <clears throat> but um, Hans has some uh, news for us as well. Did he bring chocolates? Uh, that's probably a reference I'm not getting to some random British thing, but go on. All right, that's Hans Christian Kornman, Krohlman. Writes, Interstellar Marine sets its sights on Kickstarter. Hello! I thought you might be interested in covering Interstellar Marines. It's a new FPS game on Kickstarter with Linux support that is going to be made with the doors wide open. Now, the only thing the hell does that mean, doors wide open? Doors wide open? I think... I think that might have been a typo, meaning to say that he's they're coming out with Linux support right out the gate. Hmm. I don't want to possibly misconstrue this as they're going to GPL this or something. But no, I just saw the number tick up. They're at ninety-five thousand out of six hundred thousand dollars with sixteen days to go. That's a bit of a steep order. That especially is. especially for another shooter, given how saturated the market is with shooters, especially on Linux. And, you know, I mean, it looks fun, you know. Um, you know, AAA quality uh, indie FPS, RPG elements, so it's Deus Ex, so... Maybe not necessarily Deus Ex. Non-linear gameplay set in a believable future. I'm not sure how believable this believable future is. So we're going to be dealing with um, <clears throat> a believable free... It, 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 it won't it, have uh, Starbucks, but buttfuckers, right? Yeah. No, Fuddruckers. Fuddruckers. But, um, no, well, if they make it, I'll definitely give this a look. Yeah, we'll keep it an eye inter- on it. It seems interesting, <clears throat> but, um, but, I mean, 600,000... I guess if they're going for AAA quality, then that sort of kind of justifies the price tag. But that's pretty steep, man. Yeah, you gotta have something that, you know, causes, you know, the jaw of dropping. If you, in my head, if you're at a hundred thousand dollars. Pick something a bit more realistic. I mean, like, if, who are these guys? They're, they're a small independent game developer with not really much in their portfolio, it doesn't look like. Um, well, if it all works have, out, they'll have six hundred grand in their portfolio. Yeah, supposedly they want six hundred grand. So, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that's a bit lofty. I think they maybe should have gone with something a bit more realistic at first, and put any and budget maybe for extra money because they're almost at the hundred thousand dollar mark. I, 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 I'd figure if they maybe lowballed it to maybe one or two hundred thousand dollars they would have gotten a lot more support just because they could start offering extras. But with the extras, I mean, you know, I think the $100,000 mark makes you focus on living expenses in the games, and it takes out some of the um, hooker and blue options. Yeah, that's true. So, but, you know, good on you guys. We wish you the best of luck. you got 3,000 backers. Just look up Interstellar Marines Prologue at kickstarter.com. You'll find it if it's your dice. Send them a few quid. They'll appreciate it. And like I said, we all wish them the best of luck. We're just kind of um, 
Mm. That's a big um, goal you got. And good on you, you know, think big, right? Indeed. Well, speaking of tossing these guys a few shekels. Well, you know, if we're going to be talking about um, coke blows and hookers, um, let's whore awesome. ourselves out a little bit, shall we? Sweet. And when I say whore ourselves out, I absolutely mean whore ourselves out. We'll do anything. We have sold out. We mm, will. Man, Nike we will, logos. We will take all dicks as long as there's a lot of cash at the end of them. Pretty much. But that's something you want to check us out. We're at linuxgamecast.com. And one thing you want to scream at is the about section. That's where you can find the information for our podcast. Now, that's going to change. But how can you download and access the Linux Gamecast? Well, we got the YouTubes for the Flash Oriented of you at, Linux, at youtube.com slash Linux Gamecast. We got the HD and SD video feeds. We got the audio feeds on iTunes. We're trying to get on the Zune store. We're on Miro. We're or really you can trying to get it on right there. off the RSS feeds. Yeah. Or directly from the website. That's something. Or directly from the website. I love right. bleeding that button without every month. Indeed. You can also, if you want to get in touch with us. Well, hang on. Uh, we're not, we're no, not no, on we, whoring no, yet. We still, we, we, do, we still have some whoring. We got a PayPal account now, and we got an Amazon referral link. Mm. So if you go to the About page and you click on that lovely Amazon.com affiliate link... and I'm you showing it off with my finger. Schedule some trip, some visits from the UPS man to have his lovely way with your wife. Uh, you can toss us a couple shekels if you care to buy some stuff off Amazon.com. And that's the thing with the Amazon, it costs you nothing, and it gives Zero. us everything. We might be Indeed. able to afford to eat. Or if you just or if you just want to give us money, there's our PayPal account there, too. There make is that. You know, make a donation. You know, we're not a charity, have no illusions about that, but any money we get is going to go directly back into my tie, not the show. Mm-hmm. And but anyways, that's a lie. Anyways, let's talk about um, how to contact us. Yes, you can contact my good pal Ben Stone over there, cleverly hidden on Twitter, at Ben Stone. You can yell at me at the Burning Fool on Twitter, or you can send us an email at show at linuxgamecast.com. And that's oh, amazing. and check out the forums. Oh, and the forums. Dance, Marky, dance. Also, if you go to submit, I'm about to change that to a feedback link, but if you go here, it, our um, old fill-out form, which is just being misused by people, they couldn't grasp the concept, so I've changed it back to send us a note. You click that, you're going to get this, put your name, your email, your subject, and your message, send it along, me and Jordan will get it. And always keep in mind, press kits should be sent directly to show at linuxgamecast.com. That's the only thing I expect to read in there. Anything outside of that gets marked as spam. Spam, spam and eggs. The spam is no more. Batman. Indeed. But, then? Yeah. What? We did we, we, we did the listen to us, we did the give us money, we did the contact us. Yeah, I think it's time to close it out, right? I think it's time we close this sucker down. All right, and as always, cue the music. Mm, mm, here it comes in the background. I'm Vin Stode, and as he said, he is the master swang, grooving to the moves, the music, the ideology. Oh, those awesome comic book posters in the background, they'll blow your mind. Hey, Don't if you dis planetary, I will stab you with a toothbrush. And intergalactic planetary. Planetary. Intergalactic. Well, stay tuned for the after show if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, um, just, just stay tuned. Warning. What you're about to watch may contain spoilers for movies, film, TV, and various writings in Aramaic. You have been warned, and did I mention profanity, Jordan? You did, but you had a good thing going, and you stopped it. Profanity. 
profanity. And welcome back to the Linux Gamecast weekly after show, that big party that happens after our main show, after our pre-show, but before the after-after show that no one's allowed to watch. What do we got this weekend, man? Well, I saw a couple movies. What'd you see? Since Ven I saw Cloud Atlas and I saw Skyfall. Both aerial-related names. Completely different movies. But Forrest Gump was in one of those movies, and I think that's kind of... Forrest funny. Gump was in one of those movies. Forrest Gump was playing a pissed-off Irishman, and that was pretty funny to watch. Pissed-off Irishman it sounds like it would make a good band name. I'm pretty sure there's already a band called Pissed Off Irishman. But anyways, uh, no, I, I like Cloud Atlas quite a bit. I thought I, th I thought the use of like, ver like I I I knew the second I saw it that it would probably bother people, where they have like white actors as black roles and black actors as white roles. But the, that's the thing: all the actors are like are of varying ethnicities, and they're all playing roles of different ethnicities. Now, so given is... the con given the context of the film, it makes sense that you would do that. Directed by the Wachowski Starship, right? Wachowskis, yes. Yeah. And they all said that this was the unfilmable movie. Yes, yes. As Well, I, I gotta say, the second you see yellow face Hugo Weaving, you kinda have to do a double take. Mm. That's just way too funny. It's, like, to be honest, given that with, like, the makeup, he looks like fucking Elrond from Lord of the Rings. So... You mean I'm just like Agent Smith? And, no, yeah, well, of course, of course, he plays an Agent Smith type character in a Wachowski movie. That's like required of Hugo Weaving in like his contract with the Wachowskis. But um, you know what? I, I I thought the use of a limited cast was really reminiscent of like classical theater, and I really enjoyed it. And then I mean, there's the whole reincarnation, transmigration plot. That was pretty cool, too. The one, the one thing that I really liked was the use of a constructed language near the beginning and end of the movie. Where, That's something like, I uh, want to ask you about. It, As someone who's never read the book or I the book. seen the movie, does it take place linearly? I understand it's throughout time. It is non-linear, but the idea is that like situations in the same stories will be used as a segue from one to another. So there's one where like one character is hiding with like his her her hands over her face, and it will like immediately transition to another story where that uh, where a different character is in the same situation. Mm. But it a bunch of the characters are actually like the same character, just like being reincarnated over and over again. Is it easy? to keep track of. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it'll be too confusing for people. I was able to keep track of it. I was I was actually a bit concerned that it would lose me. But what was the name the, of that movie? There, there, um, there, 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 there were one or two things that I thought I had missed, but then I would remembered I was thinking about that while I was watching the movie, so... Well, that kind of boils down, to, not really boils down, but harkens back to um, boom, Inception. Uh, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, that was confusing. I had to watch it three or four times. And I was like, for, for a reason why, it was straightforward. I, I had no issue as, following as, Aside from the fact that they're both science fiction and they're both kind of arty films, there's really no similarities between Inception and Cloud Atlas. You think it's more of a movie, art piece, or just brilliant? Well... Uh well, Christopher Nolan's, like, known for these really provocative and thoughtful pieces that, like, make you think. Or, like, make you analyze a movie. And, I mean, th this is this is obviously an art piece, because they're doing, like, the traditional theater thing. And they're doing... it Like, the movie looks fucking gorgeous. Like, the CG is beautiful. But, um... Yeah... I don't know where I'm going with this now. Well, it was a good movie. It seems like, like it gave you a proper chubby, man. I mean... Yeah? Sure. Proper chubby. Uh, Skyfall was pretty good. Um, I'm What's gonna be Skyfall spoiling... about? I'm going to be spoiling the fuck out of Skyfall, because I got problems with Sky... Okay, o overall, Skyfall was a good movie. I enjoyed it. The action was good. The dialogue was snappy and witty and Bond-like. Completely not Quantum of Solace. Which oh, that's right. Skyfall's the James Bond movie, man. 
Yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. We're on the same plane now. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Sorry. I I, I figured that goes without saying. Um, I didn't like the reason they call it Skyfall. And that stems from my interpretation of the Bond character. And the fact that where, skies didn't fall. No, no, skies did not fall. Um, even though the opening fa- song by Adele seemed to indicate that. No, um... So, I was always a fan of the theory that, like, James Rubin Bond was never actually a person. Go ahead. Ben, your voice is beautiful. <laughs> I think you should I think you should sing the next James Bond intro theme. Oons, oons, oons. James Bond movie. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, so, I was always a fan of the theory that James Bond was never actually, like, a person, but, like, an identity that various agents would assume. Right, a 007, right? Yeah, 007, like, you were never, the, the people we saw as James Bond, their real name wasn't James Bond. That was an identity that was given to them to operate under the specific role. That's why you have, like, Lazenby and Connery. And That's Bond. what I've been saying, and when Nick Cage finally christens the franchise with his holy presence, we'll be able to accept that he's 007. Mm-hmm. But this movie seems to indicate and th- this movie is a prequel. This is this is a this is pre Connery Bond. This is this is the Bond character before he was Connery. So this is like set back in. No, it's not. But like, oh fuck all of that then, man. Okay, because Money Penny gets introduced at the very end. Jude. Okay, I'm um, fuck it. Judy and Edge fucking dies. Ray Fiennes is the new M, but you could tell that like right at the beginning. Um. It's basically setting up, like, the classic Bond setup, where they even, like, the last scene of the movie is in the fucking office that Bond walks into as Sean Connery, like, every movie. So this is not a re- this is a reset. This is a reset. We get, so, it, 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 spoiler alert, it turns out the woman who shoots Bond in the trailer is actually Money Penny. She was a field agent, and because she shot Bond, she was not let out in the field anymore. Hmm. That's basically it. Um, so, right. Skyfall. The reason the movie is called Skyfall is because the climax is in this fucking ranch or this property in Scotland called Skyfall. And that's where James Bond grew up. And his old Scottish groundskeeper is still there. Who I really wish they pulled Sean Connery out of retirement to play. <laughs> but the guy they got was fine. That, that just would have been awesome. That would have been like the best mind fuck ever. But, uh, but alas, but alas, um, and the the groundskeeper looks at him, and he's eyes wide, and he says James Bond, and immediately my heart sank because that completely out of canon destroys the theory that James Bond is an identity, unless, and uh, this actually just occurred to me, unless, um, like he is the base identity that all the other Bonds get grafted into. But even then, that's a reset, and yeah. Did you uh, like uh, it? I mean, uh, what do you? Uh, well, I mean, if you like it or not, I mean, it's much like watching a Transformers movie. And I've said this before. I mean, you go to see a certain thing, and with a Bond movie, I mean, there's a certain formula that I expect to see. I don't expect to be blown away by any means, man. Oh, the other the the other thing about Skyfall is like. Whenever you're in IT or whenever you're in computer science, and you get the same thing if you're like a doctor or you're you you have like training in medical science or pharmacy, and you watch House, and you immediately know that this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. There are this is supposed to be like a hacker-based movie. This would be like the Live Free or Die Hard of the James Bond franchise, in which the villain is a hacker. And there's a couple moments where you just are like. As as just like a guy in IT, I'm just like. Uh, are you saying what? they're cringeworthy? No. It, it's just like, why are you hooking up the master hacker's computer via three Ethernet ports to your entire unprotected network? Don't you? Why would you do that? that three's better than. No, no. no. So so I, I'm figuring they're doing like some sort of Ethernet bond to just do a mirror of his hard drive. But either way, like. I don't get what they what they expected would happen. 
Oh, what this this hacker? He let us. He he's captured, and we're gonna plug his computer into our into like a non isolated network. Oh, what the man. fuck is that? That that makes no sense whatsoever. So what else did you get into this weekend, man? Movie wise, that, TV wise, do you that, see, you saw last week's that, South Park, right? I, oh yeah, I saw I saw South Park episodes. Mm. Um, I, the day after we recorded uh, last week's podcast, I had watched that week's South Park. And this week, I had watched uh, the season finale of South Park. I didn't see the season finale yet, but last week's, I kind of dug it. I haven't actually finished watching the end of it, so apparently I didn't dig it that damn hard. Oh, man. The the, the ending got a really good laugh out of me. Do you want me to spoil it for you? That's the point of this. All right. Jesus is taking, like, actual performance. Jesus is taking HGH. And he fucking roids out, and he uses that to solve the problem. Because Stan's like, what would Jesus do? And I Jesus love the like, whole Jesus. bracelet thing, though. I thought that was clever of them. Yeah, the, the, the uh, what were they called? Oh, I have no idea. I call them bracelet uh, things. They, you know, they were the scazes. The scazes for causes. The scazes for causes. I do have a little yellow thing on the back of my Pantera. That's a yellow ribbon that says I like yellow ribbons. I got one for Firefox just because I was at a conference. And I used it to attach a set of keys to so that I wouldn't lose those keys. Because it's a bright orange thing. And oh, yeah. oh, oh. Do you know what came out this week, man? What came out this week? Blood and Chrome. Oh, yes, new BSG. I have not watched that. Two episodes oh, actually, are online. Well, two, two parts of the pilot are online, I guess I should say. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're just breaking the first episode up into, like, what, ten-minute segments? And... Yeah, it's miserable. I watched the first part, and I immediately... When I saw there were two parts, I was like, okay, I'll give that a try, and if I like it, I'll watch the second part. I completely... Nerd chilled the hell out on the first one, chewed up the second one, and went, "Whoa, this is not cool, man! I need to wait until everything's together." I watched uh, the Forward Unto Dawn, the Halo Four web series. That was actually pretty well done. For I've heard people say that was well, yeah, produced and acted and had decent thingies. Yeah, it it really did. Um, one of my coworkers is like. That is disgustingly better than it deserves to be. It's kind of like the movie uh, Zoolander. What is this? A school for ants? It needs to be at least three times the size. Slow. Oh. Man, that's brilliant. No, I, I didn't. I've never computer. played Halo. Oh. That's a lie. I played Halo on the original Xbox over at one of my Hackaday friend's house, and we were having a hack day with a bunch of people, and he had networked his Xbox throughout the house. Multiple Xbox, and I guess you would say. And Box. playing an FPS with hat controllers, I just uh, hand, I handed it, I handed the controller right back to him after about three minutes, and so I'm going to throw this at your TV. Yeah, mouse and keyboard is superior for first-person shooters. There's no denying that. There's no denying that, man. Even... Like, I think on the PS2, they released, um, on the PS2 network with, um, Unreal Tournament 2. Yeah, you could, like, use a keyboard and mouse with it. Well, before even that, they allowed the, I mean, it was only for, like, two weeks. They let the PS2 players play on regular servers. Really? Yeah, there was no technology preventing that from happening. They could play. I, 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 I wouldn't figure there would be, because it's just the same, it's all the same protocol. Why would you write two different protocols? That was a small problem, though. What was that? The console tards were getting slaughtered? That's a very polite way of putting annihilated or curb stomped or just eviscerated or um, yeah. Nick caged all over the place, man. Man. Console gamers just need to realize that, I mean... Fuck it. It's a controller. It's, it's not the same precision as a keyboard. And mouse. I think you console gamers, I mean, outside of us, you know, being the um, glorious PC gaming master race, you need to understand... And beyond, beyond that, the glorious Linux PC gaming master race. Yeah, we are even that much higher than the rest of them. Yeah. Metaphorically speaking. Um, 
You have a computer in your console, and guess what? Your computer's seven years old. Yeah. Yep. Old hardware, and they need to update all the systems because that has been holding PC gaming back as a whole. Because as a developer, you got to be able to get it on the PS3, you got to get it on the Xbox, whatever's, how many revolutions. And it still has to work with it. I mean, we, we dealt with that with Carmack, with um that latest um, game demo they made for the latest ID Tech. Rage. Rage. I liked your Rage better than mine, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I practiced that one for a while. Uh, hopefully we'll see long, that long, show. Longer up. than I care to admit. Yeah. I can't wait till that gets GPL'd, though. Mega textures. Yes, we get to play with triangles. Triangles are fun. They're your best friend. Triangles. Yay. All right. What else do we have to talk about on this little I'll after tell you a bonus. bug and open shot I found. Oh, tell us about a bug and open shot. While editing last week's Linux Gamecast. Now, you know we have a bit of audio drift, right? Yeah. Well. We've got it down to a second, which is easy enough to correct, as long as I can zoom in on the timeline for an eight-second zoom. I need to be able to see eight seconds of audio so I know where to cut it and just move over a fraction of a second at certain intervals, which will just works. Mm -hmm. After about 50 minutes or an hour, since we basically did a two-hour show last week. Pretty much, yeah. It can't zoom into eight seconds anymore. It brings you down to, I think, at maximum, like, 12 seconds, which there's no way to recorrect the audio stream with a video stream. So I had to take our after show into a separate project, edit it, then export it at an extremely high bit rate, then re-import it into the original. It was just such a pain in the ass. Uh-huh. I, for one, welcome our new Lightworks Overlord, since I have experience on that system from way back when, and I know how to use Lightworks. it. Lightworks. With its, what, like, 50-member beta, or what What was it? Um, 200. 200 people? Are you shitting me? Then you give 200 people access, and you don't give me access. How mental is that? I, I just think it's stupid that they're... I mean, like, the the Steam guys knew that, like, the second the binaries hit the net, people will have it running. They figured, what? Not only did they know it, they it. planned on it, man. Yeah, they, they was just like, this is coming. No, like, it, 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 it's expected behavior. The second anything hits the net in the Linux world, people are tearing it apart. Right, and we've seen all this week new games rolling out, and they could have put a lock on that business. They don't care. They're making money. People are going to spend the money now. They're making money. Even in the beta, they know that... In the beta. And it's kind of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Um, exactly. That all these games like Sirius Sam and a couple of other games we mentioned during the show that... Ooh, look, they're going on sale, even though there's only 1,000 people in the official beta. Yeah, but, I mean, like I said, the second, it's to be expected. So, I'm surprised that a company like well, Lightworks would be like, oh yeah, we're doing a Linux beta, but only like 200 people are allowed to use our software. That makes no sense. Like, at least, at least with the, the Linux beta lockout, if you can even call it that, they just, they're just like, we just want feedback from this one group of people so we can, sol we can solve all the issues on Ubuntu 12.10, and that'll be it. <sighs> I don't know, but, but I still, think Steam I mean, did a good idea. Um, we've already resolved most of the issues with all the other distributions. Exactly. In under a week, I mean, to the point where it's stable and it's running. Exactly. I mean, so, for fuck's sake, it's running on Slackware. It's running on Slackware. But, now, the Lightworks guys... I mean, it would have been really handy if you had thrown me one of those keys. Call me. Um, yeah, like, they're going to be listening to our shit. Apparently not. They're not listening to anybody's shit. Um, you know, a year after you promised the Linux beta. Oh, man. That's harsh. Uh, 
It just made me a very sad panda when I sad panda indeed. <laughs> sad panda. Sad panda. So I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for our after yeah. show, and we're kind of keeping it short mainly because we want to get the steam goodness from our yeah. brains into the computers, out to the interwebs in a timely order. Hopefully tomorrow. In diddly doodly. Diddly doodly diddly. Diddly doodly diddly diddly. Diddly. Doodly. Fuck you. I love you too, man. Yes, hugs everywhere. Um, we are going to wrap this up, so I can go ahead and get started on the editing side of the job. Um, Excellent. Scream at us as always. Vinstone. Oh, we're going to need to add I'm plus... Vinstone on the Googs on the G Plus and I'm um, plus Jordan Swung on the Google Plus. Yeah, uh, spelt kinda like the same way it's in his thing at the Burning Fool on the Twitter nets and at uh, Vinstone. Cleverly hidden. Disguised even. It's been fun hanging out with you, man. We need to talk Indeed. more often, but we don't because that makes for a better show. Indeed. And thanks, everyone, for, I mean, genuinely. Oh, I also want to thank Pizza Dude, if I didn't, Aaron E., for sending us several notes about some of the games that were being available Indeed. for the Linuxes under the Steamacies. Pizza Dude. All right, so let's peace out this. Peace, Oot. I say peace. The critter says V for victory, and... Vendetta, here's Jordan, he's going to wave at everyone and we're going to fade out. Ah.